Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale Southern Pacific SD40T-2 locomotive from Scale Trains. This model is part of the Scale Trains rivet counter line. I previously reviewed two Scale Trains tunnel motors from the first run, one in SP gray with a full light package and one in Rio Grande black and orange. In this new run, Scale Trains is offering Southern Pacific tunnel motors with 1990s era details. In this time period, many SP locomotives had the emergency and oscillating lights removed and ditch lights and beacons were added. In this special review, I'm going to take a look at two tunnel motors. SP8496 is decorated in Southern Pacific's 1990s era speed lettering scheme. SP8556 is in the traditional SP gray and red with Roman lettering. This model is available in two versions. The factory direct price for the version with Lok Sound DCC and sound installed is $269.99. The factory direct price for the DCC ready version is $179.99. For this review, we'll start each model at 100 possible points. Both models come in a sturdy cardboard box with foam lining. Inside is an operator's manual with explanations of how the DCC function keys are set up, lubrication instructions, and other information. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. Foam inserts protect the handrails. One of the sander lines in my model of 8496 was loose in the box. My model of 8556 had the exact same issue. It took some fiddling to get the part back in place. I don't think a new model this expensive should arrive with loose parts, so I'm taking five points from both models. I doubt the box design is to blame for the loose part, and the box should provide adequate protection for storage and transport. Tunnel motors were built to draw cool air from a lower height to combat overheating in Southern Pacific snow sheds on Donner Pass. Rio Grande also bought some of these locomotives. The SD40T-2 was essentially an SD40-2 with a different radiator section. Neither the SP nor the Rio Grande had conventional SD40-2s. I found some photos online of the real SP8496 taken between 1994 and 2001, and the model looks to be a close match for the real locomotive in that time period. Key spotting features are the plated over oscillating light and emergency light locations, speed lettering paint, and the addition of ditch lights. A photo of 8496 from 1991 shows the engine with the plated over lights and beacon but without ditch lights or speed lettering paint. I found photos of 8556 taken between 1995 and 2001 and that model also appears to be generally correct for those years. Scale trains got a lot of things right, especially details that would be hard to correct like the used to be L-shaped engineer's front window. By the 1990s this had been replaced with two separate panes of glass with a narrow post between. The numbers in the number boards are the more traditional SP style, which is correct for 8496. In the 1990s, some SP engines carried Rio Grande style numbers. My model of 8556 has the Rio Grande style number boards, even though this engine retained its traditional SP Roman lettering. 8556 also kept its front mounted air horn, while the horn on 8496 was moved to the rear. While it's in the correct place, the horn on 8556 doesn't match the photos, so I'm taking 5 points. I didn't find a clear enough shot of the horn on 8496 from before the UP merger to say one way or the other if it's correct or not. A photo from 1998 shows a different style horn, but it's possible that it was changed after the merger, so I'm giving the model the benefit of the doubt. 8496 has low deck mounted ditch lights, while 8556 has taller ditch lights. Both are correct for their respective units. It's great that Scale Trains is able to reproduce this kind of unit specific detail. I did find a few other minor discrepancies. The plow on 8496 is close but not quite correct. The real 8496 had a larger and more squared off cutout around the coupler. On the cab roof, the beacon on the real engine was mounted with longer legs that raised it up noticeably above the roof level. The beacon on the model is nearly flush with the roof. The cover plate in the emergency light location looks a little too small. Of all these things, the beacon would be the hardest to correct, so I'm taking 5 points from 8496. The model of 8556 has a beacon, but I found a photo from 1995 showing the locomotive with ditch lights but no beacon. It's possible that the engine might have had a beacon for a while before that. Some SP engines lost their beacons at or around the same time they got ditch lights. Since I can't say definitively that a beacon was never on the real locomotive at the same time as the ditch lights, I'm giving 8556 the benefit of the doubt here. The paint on both models is opaque and thin enough not to obscure detail. The markings are crisp and most of the tiny writing is legible with magnification. 8556 has painted a noticeably lighter shade of gray than 8496, reminding me of Atherin's Prime for Grime SP diesels. The paint is no doubt intended to look faded. 
In the photos I found, the real engine was fairly heavily weathered, so the faded color might make a good base for adding more weathering. The faded out builder's plates on both engines are nice touches, adding to the illusion that these were aging locomotives in the 1990s. The detail is really outstanding. On the fireman's side, the front truck has a speed recorder cable and brake lines. There's also a very nicely done brake chain. I really like the SP style jacking pads. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic and most of the stanchions are straight. Be careful when handling them though. On my model, they tend to pop out of their holes easily. Fortunately, they're pretty easy to put back in. One of the biggest standout features of this model is the completely open air intake area at the rear. The grills are photo etched and just like the real thing, there's not much in there. It's hard to see, but there's even a bulkhead at the front on the inside. There are actually fans inside too. Granted, I had to flip the model over to see them and they're not going to show up under normal layout viewing conditions, but it's still cool. In front, the model has separately applied windshield wipers and grab irons. All of the details are very delicate and in proportion. The anti-climber has double stanchions in the middle, just like the real thing. The pilot has MU hoses, an uncoupling lever, and a brake line hose. The armrests on these models are painted black or a very dark brown, which matches prototype photos better than the scale train's SP tunnel motors from the first run. The cab windows slide, although on my models, a couple of them are stuck in the open position. I'll probably tack glue mine to hold them in place. The cab has a full interior. Unlike the SP unit I reviewed previously, these two models have no issues with the sunshades. In back, the model has separately applied grab irons. The rear pilot also has MU hoses, a brake hose, and an uncoupling lever. I like the narrow coupler boxes. SP had a couple different ways of plating over rear headlight clusters. This style with two individual plates is correct for 8556. I was not able to find a clear rear end shot of 8496, so I'm going to give that model the benefit of the doubt. On top, the model has more neat detail. The AC unit, antenna stand, and freestanding conduit all look correct. The exhaust is open. The dynamic brake fans have photo etched grills in the correct number of blades. The radiator grills are photo etched. Underneath, the engine has great detail below the sill, including traction motor cables, air filters, and fuel tank plumbing. All of the axles are powered and all the wheels pick up current. The model is equipped with scale trains knuckle couplers. The coupler in the front of 8496 is slightly low, so I'm taking five points. The rear coupler is also low. The front coupler in 8556 is low. The rear coupler is also low. All of the wheels on both engines are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. Neither locomotive has any body wobble issues. 8496 weighs 19.5 ounces. 8556 weighs 19.6. Both are a little bit lighter than the two tunnel motors that I reviewed from the previous run that weighed 20.7 ounces each. Despite the lighter weight, both engines produced a peak drawbar pull of 4.9 ounces, up from the 4.4 ounces I measured when I reviewed the previous run. I'm running the engines on DCC and I haven't changed any of the factory default settings, except to reprogram the addresses to make consisting easier. Like most DCC models, the engines are set to address 3 out of the box. Both engines have the same function key set up, so I'm only demoing the lights on 8496. The number boards on the model turn on when the F8 key is pressed, which also turns on the sound. F0 operates the headlight, which comes on in the direction of travel. The front headlight is on when the engine is set to move forward, and the rear headlight comes on when the engine is set in reverse. F6 turns on the ditch lights, which are also directional. F7 turns on the beacon. F2 sounds the horn. F1 rings the bell. This locomotive has the look sound drive hold feature set up on the F9 key. This allows the engine sound to operate independently of the locomotive's speed. A heavy train starting out can be moving slow even with the prime mover in notch 8. A coasting locomotive can notch back down to idle while still moving. F10 is a brake. The momentum settings will determine how quickly the engine stops and starts. F4 turns on the dynamic brake sound.
The overall sound volume is plenty loud for most layouts. I usually end up turning all my locomotives down anyway. Both of the models have capacitors that keep them running for a few seconds when they lose power, which should help to keep them from stalling on dirty track. To disassemble the model, start by removing the screws that hold the coupler boxes together. The rear coupler assembly came out as a unit, but I had to extract the front one in pieces. Once the coupler boxes are out, carefully grip the shell and fuel tank and pull the model apart. Don't grip the model by the dynamic brake assembly as it will just detach. Note that there are no wires between the shell and the chassis. Some of the lights rely instead on cleverly designed contact pins. Inside, the model has a Loxound 5 series sound decoder plugged into a 21 pin connector on the main light board. If you have the DCC ready version, this is where you'd plug in your decoder. According to the instructions, the model will accept any 21 pin decoder, but some of the lighting functions will only work with an ESU Loxound or Lokpilot non sound DCC decoder. With the shell off, we can get a better look at the internal fan detail molded into the chassis. If you're like me and you'd rather substitute KD couplers for the scale trains couplers that came with the model, first pry out the scale trains coupler spring. I'm using KD number 158 scale couplers which drop right in. Any of the KD whisker couplers should work. Make sure the couplers are free to move side to side in the boxes before putting them back on the model. The rear coupler was easy to put back in, but because of the design of the coupler box and the shape of the plow, the front took quite a bit of fiddling. Having the larger coupler cutouts as on the prototype would have made this a lot easier. Both couplers on 8556 are low after substituting Katie's. Fixing this will take some additional work. Let's see what we've got. For 8496, the model had loose parts, so I took five points in the packaging category. The engine had a few minor inaccuracies, so I took five points in the prototype accuracy category. Both couplers were low, so I took 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with a total of 80 out of 100 possible points, which would be a B- on a report card. 8556 also had loose parts, so I took 5 points in the packaging category. The horn didn't match prototype photos, so I took 5 points in the prototype accuracy category. Both couplers were low, so I took 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 80 out of 100 possible points, which would be a B- on a report card. These are both nice models, and they deserve a green signal. I think scale trains did a really nice job on this locomotive. If you're looking for a 1990s vintage tunnel motor for your layout, then I think you might like it.